you remark in your book that you had a, you'd heard about this Wuhan um, virus that was out there and you said to yourself, I'll be dealing with this in a while. You didn't realise to what extent you might be dealing with it. I don't think any of us, you know, could foresee the, the scale and, you know, what, how long it would go on, how significant a challenge it would be for many of our societies. But we didn't doubt, even from the earliest stages, that this was going to be a challenge for us. I had been through SARS uh, back at the time of the Special Olympics in the early 2000s when I was a relatively recently appointed deputy CMO and I was also through swine flu. I understood the potential of these, uh, not only to, to spread, but to spread quickly and facilitated by by international travel uh, and by by, by globalisation. Um, the, the, the swine flu epidemic took uh, six weeks from the point at which it was first noticed to the point at which it was declared a pandemic. So I knew we had a relative short period of time and we'd start to see cases. Much of the reporting in the early days was about something in China and people believing that the risks were all confined there, but we, we knew differently. Um, and it was uh, April, I think, before you got the call from Ronald Glenn saying, we have our first case. No, actually, in fact, that was the, that was the 29th of February. Oh, the, 29th was the, of February. Yeah, it was, the, it was the leap year. Leap day. Leap day, leap day, exactly. Leap day. Um, the, the, what was going on, of course, was uh, the Taoiseach was heading off to New York. Yes. We had Cheltenham, which went ahead yes. and people were not kind of cautioned against going to Cheltenham. And yet we were scared that any places where you had congregations of people was going to be disastrous. And so it turned out. Uh, absolutely. And ultimately, this disease is spread by people in contact with one another. And many of the measures that we put in place, you know, you could argue uh, the question around the timing of those. Could we have put some of those measures in place? What we at an earlier stage, what we were trying to ensure is that we first of all followed what the science was saying. Second of all, that we followed what both ECDC and WHO were recommending uh, and that we didn't, if you like, um, um, uh, move out of step with what either the science or the international advice was saying. And in those early stages, there was strong advice against the imposition of, if you, if you recall, international travel prohibitions and all of that, the maintenance of open borders. Mm. The reality is in Ireland, uh, we're a small island economy. We're entirely uh, uh, enmeshed, as it were, with both the UK, with whom we, we have a common travel area, but also Europe, culturally, legally, politically, and every other way, mm -hmm. and socially. Um, looking back on it, the things that might have been done better, I mean, we had uh, people being discharged from hospitals into nursing homes, and it was for many of them a death sentence. Yeah, but but and, and a lot has been spoken about that, and there was uh, measures in place to attempt to test people prior to discharge. But the nursing homes, uh, not just in this country, became a very significant focus of 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 infection, uh, a place of substantial mortality, unfortunately and sadly for people uh, who lost uh, loved ones. Much of the in much of the epidemic in nursing homes happened long after that point, long after the point at which visitation to nursing homes was. Was, was, yeah. But was you had ceased, uh, which is agency the staff, for example, working in different nursing homes yes. and cross-contaminating. Yes, and, and like the reality is nursing homes cannot be fully sealed off from the community. We had raging infection levels in the community in, and to, it's impossible to completely protect uh, when you have such high levels of community transmission. So the first thing we must do and, and did do effectively and quickly was, was, was uh, limit community transmission. And then we focused substantially on nursing homes and putting in place specific measures to try yeah. to protect nursing it, homes as much as we could. Wasn't that a bit slow, though? Well, in, you could say that in retrospect. And like the, the, the understanding, if you like, of asymptomatic transmission, we didn't have in those days. Anything that we can do to try to eliminate or address the risk that exists, because look, the truth mm. of it is, Pat, and it's, it's a hard thing to say, if we had set about designing a model of care to place older people at greater risk, we couldn't have done much better than building the model of nursing home care that we had. And that's something we, we must address into the future. Yeah. Uh, flu, most winters, is also a challenge in those significant yeah. environments. So we have to have a conversation about this as a, as a society, about how we look after our older mm -hmm. people. Because this, this COVID infection, we can say that it was caused by SARS-CoV-2, and that's, that's technically true. But it was, it was caused by inequality. People who were in the greatest risks, whether they were older or had underlying illnesses, and people who were marginalised from the point of view of uh, economic uh, circumstances, living in crowded accommodation. These are the people who suffered the burden of this infection. Yeah. Um, some of the things that on this programme we criticise Neffet for, and this is a huge body of uh, expertise. Yes. Um, masking. We were advocating masking very early on. Once it became clear it was an airborne infection. The second thing was antigen testing. We were advocating antigen testing you know, for very specific uses. And we remember Philip Nolan uh, comparing them to snake oil. 
Um, I, I know that uh, th- there is an intention on the part of government to to have an inquiry and to have an investigation for the purpose of trying to establish how we might better learn. And I've no difficulty with looking at, at, at some of these questions about the timing and so on. I know in relation to masks, and I don't want to get into trying to defend the specific issues, but uh, we introduced our mask mandates in this country before there were general recommendations from the WHO. So we were looking at all of these these different things, but it's it with, with the benefit of hindsight, for sure we can find things that we could have, yeah. should have, and perhaps will do again in the future. And the issue with antigen tests wasn't so much the test, but how they were understood by the public. And I would still contend... But but they became the go-to test. But they are still poorly used and poorly understood. People will take the test, but when they have a negative test, will still continue to go out and about on the basis that they have a negative antigen test, even if they have streaming runny noses. That is not how they should be used. That was always my concern. It wasn't about the test per se, but it was how somebody interpreted that test and how it informed their behaviour. Um, one of the areas that uh, where, again, you criticise government was that meaningful Christmas that they determined we should all have and therefore hospitality opens. And, and you're saying that the Irish public are not sophisticated, really. Once the pubs are open, yippee. Well, I think in this country, probably true in other societies as well, but it's a fairly good signal that if you're told that it's OK to go into crowded pubs, that you can infer that everything else is safe as well. Uh, and at the time, we did not feel that that was the right course. Uh, we did look at the time of trying to find a way of easing measures for families and, in, and and enabling more visitation just around the Christmas period because this was our second Christmas going through COVID restrictions as a society. And that was a concern for us and people's adherence to what were very, very difficult measures. But look, the reality is, I say those things, but I have to set it against the fact that in this country we had wonderful solidarity that went from the top of the political system right the way to, to every corner of society. And that was one of the reasons why our excess mortality, our vaccination rates, our hospitalisation rates in this country are among mm. the best in Europe. We've been commended for this in, in international, ob- objective, independent reports in The Lancet and by the WHO. Um, you do talk about a leaker within NEFET. And uh, you also, in your acknowledgements, thank a whole pile of people in NEFET. I'm wondering, and I haven't done the exercise, could I figure out who the leaker was? By looking at the list, the membership of Neffet and the acknowledgements at the end of the book. You're, you're a bright man. I'd never say that you couldn't work something out uh, deductively and logically. But I, I, I'm not an, uh, on any kind of mission to identify anybody. I simply wanted to convey a sense of how I felt about the, the challenge that that created for me. In my leadership, when I tried to engage, for example, with our minister or with the Taoiseach and Tónaiste, and this was happening, I found it incredibly undermining. Uh, mm. and, and that was what I was trying to convey. I'm not trying to identify anybody or cause. Mm. And for the most part in this book, and, and while there have been some things highlighted, I'm not trying to cause difficulties for anybody. I'm simply trying to tell the story as it related to my experience. Um, 